Now we're going to do some applications of right triangle trigonometry. Here we go. The first one is sort of a basic application. We're going to be solving right triangles. In other words, we're going to get a couple pieces of information on the right triangles and then we'll find all the rest of the information, the stuff that's missing. Now, in general, we label the sides with little letters and the angles with capital letters. So let's look at this first example here. Let's finish naming the sides and the angles. Okay, so let's do it. So cutie pie D, this is angle D, which is the right angle, and opposite the angle D is side little d. Cute? Okay, now look at E. E is the angle, capital E, the side opposite will be little e. And then on this one we have little f, the angle opposite will be capital F. So that's the naming of the triangle. Now, all right, we're going to solve this right triangle. And you'll notice that on here, little a is 5 centimeters, so I'm going to label this as 5 centimeters. Little b, we don't know, and little c is 10 centimeters. And c is the 90 degree angle. Now this one is the one where we have two sides, and we have to find the remaining side and the remaining angles. So we're going to round all of our answers to the nearest tenth. Here we go. Since we have two sides of the triangle, we can get the third side by using the Pythagorean theorem. So we're going to say a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So the hypotenuse is 10. Little a is 5. And little b, we don't know, we'll discover it. So 25, b squared is equal to 75. And so b is going to be the square root of 75. This is an exact answer, you guys. Okay? So if I asked for the exact answer, you would write square root of 75. But I asked for an approximate answer to the nearest tenth, and when I do that on my calculator, b is approximately equal to 8.7 what? Centimeters. So I'm going to fill it in up here. Perfect. Now I have to work on the angles. I mean, I could guess them or whatever, but I'm totes going to look at a trig function. So let's try to find capital angle A. Well, let's see a trig function that could help us. Do, 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 do. So we could use opposite over hypotenuse. And that would be the sine of angle A. Notice how I use capital A. Here we go. So we know that the sine of angle A is the opposite, which is 5, over the hypotenuse, which is 10. So the sine of angle A is one half. Now actually, we know an angle whose sine is a half, Bamelina, it's 30 degrees. But if you forget, you can do the inverse sine on your calculator. And if you do that on your calculator, you'll get A is equal to 30 degrees. And I won't even have to round that, 30 degrees. Now, the beauty part of it is I know that the sum of the angles of any triangle is 180. So to get angle B, or the measure of angle B more accurately, the measure of angle B is going to equal 180, take away 90, take away 30 degrees, and these are all degrees, you guys. So angle B is going to equal 60 degrees, which you already knew anyway because we focus so much on the cute, adorable 30, 60, 90 triangle. Okay, now this in this next example, I wrote a few things already. Um, in this next example, we're going to solve the right triangle with different types of information. So 
I labeled um, D is the 90 degree angle, but opposite D is the hypotenuse, little d. So that's right, I wrote HYP. And then capital E, angle E, is 61 degrees. So we can blamo get the measure of angle F by just doing this. 180, take away 90 for angle D, 90 degrees, take away 61 degrees, and you get 29 degrees. So angle F is 29 degrees. 29 plus 61 plus 90, just double checking, is 180, so I know I'm good. Little e is 4 centimeters. So we have to calculate the other two sides. And luckily for us, we know trig, right? So we're going to use the 61. We can use the 29 as well because they're nice and exact. There's no rounding involved. But the minute you round an angle, I would not use that rounded angle to get another result, okay, because then you can get round up air. So here we go. So I'm going to use the sine of E is equal to 4 centimeters over D, little d, because we don't know that. Opposite over hypotenuse, right? Cool? Well, so we want to do the sine of 61 degrees is equal to 4 over d. And I know this sounds weird, but I'm going to cross multiply here and leave the sine of 61 in place for a second, okay? So it's going to be d times the sine of 61 degrees is equal to 4. And I want to solve for d, so I'm going to divide both sides by the sine of 61 degrees. And so I get little d is equal to 4 over the sine of 61 degrees. So I take my handy dandy calculator and I do 4 divided by the sine of 61 degrees and I'm going to round that to the nearest tenth so little d will be approximately 4.6 centimeters. It's approximate. Okay, it's exact here. There he is. He's all exact. Nope, nothing's approximated. The minute I put it into my calculator, I can put in, I get an approximation, and it's 4.6 centimeters when I round it. Okay, now what about F? And you're saying, well, I could use the Pythagorean theorem. And you're saying, yes, you could, but again, 4.6 is a rounded value now. It's like he's been rounded. You can't deal with him. So now we're going to use another trig function and 61 to get F little f, side f, and I'm going to use the tangent of 61 degrees is equal to 4 over little f. Isn't he cute? Now you're saying, well, how come I can't use, um, since f is 29, how come I couldn't use, like, the tangent of 29 degrees? We can. We can use the tangent of 29 degrees is equal to f over 4. And that would even be faster, right? But either way you do it, either equation, this guy right here or this guy right here, you're going to get the same value for f. And you won't get, and because 29 degrees was not rounded in the first place, we can still use it. So I like this one better, because if I cross-multiply, blammo, I just get the F. So this becomes, I'm going to move it way up here. F is equal to 4 times the tangent of 29 degrees. And I just popped that into my calculator, 4 times the tangent of 29, and that gives me F is approximately equal to 2.2 centimeters. So 2.2 centimeters. 
da da. Okay. Now, many applications use an angle of elevation and an angle of depression, and here they are. They're always measured from your eye, looking out horizontally. Angle of elevation is when you look up at the balloon. Angle of depression is when you're looking up at the balloon, but the balloon guy's staring off into the horizon, nice and horizontal. So those angles are always measured with a horizontal line. Want to do the next thing? Yeah, let's. Let's solve some problems. Okay, it's a beautiful, sunny, and slightly windy day, so you go outside to fly a kite. Our string measures 61 feet. At one point, the string is taut, and we notice the angle of elevation of the kite and the string is approximately 57 degrees. How high is the kite? So here I am, I'm flying the kite, and I'm not really taking into consideration my height. Okay, because so I'm just going to say approximately. And that's my eye. It doesn't even look like my eye. but And I'm flying my kite, and it's and when the, the, when the string is taut, it's 26 feet. And here's my kite. Good? All right. And the angle of elevation, again, I'm measuring it from my eye. This is 57 degrees. And I want to know approximately... How high is the kite? Cool. Here's my angle of elevation. It's always got to have one side of the angle, or ray of the angle, if you will, will be a horizontal line. Okay? So now I'm going to do use a trig function. And what trig function am I going to use? Well, this is hypotenuse, and this is the side opposite. So, blammo, what is it? What is it? You guessed it. It's the sine of the angle, which is 57 degrees, is equal to x over 26 feet. So I'm going to multiply both sides, cross-multiply. This is an equal to, not a divide. So it's going to be x is equal to 26. Notice how I put the 26 in front of the sine of 57 degrees. Good. Then I take out my handy-dandy calculator, and I do 26 times the sine of 57. Blam all. I keep using that. I'm sorry. X is approximately equal to 21.8 feet. So it's about 21.8 feet off the ground. Ta-da! Another one. Yeah, let's. A cameraman is supposed to take a picture of a firework when it explodes. He stations his camera 150 feet away from the launch point. So here's the camera. Yeah, it doesn't even look like a camera. Hundred and fifty feet away from the launch point. Cool. Yay. And then if the firework is launched straight up in the air and it's supposed to explode when it's 350 feet high. Okay, I'm going to move the camera in a little. Let me get my little eraser. See, this is what you do when you um, read problems and start doing things like this. It's super cool. So this is 150 feet, right? Here's my camera. Okay. <clears throat> At what angle should the camera be pointed? So we want to figure out what is this angle right there. Perfect, because that's my camera. I'll label it with a C. Okay, so now we want to figure out the angle. So what we're going to do is we're going to say what trig function opposite over adjacent. So it's going to be the tangent of, well, let's call it angle cam. Good? The tangent of angle cam is equal to 350 divided by 150. Cool? So, we're going to calculate that. So, cam, that's your camera angle, is equal to the inverse tangent of 350 over 150. Cool? Yay! So I just get my little inverse tangent. I hit the second tan. 
350 divided by 150 and I get the camera angle is approximately equal to 66.8 degrees. Cool? Totally cool. Let's do an X. Spider-Man is hanging out partway up a building. He looks at a nearby building 125 feet away, noticing that the angle of elevation to the top of the building is 8.2 degrees and the angle of depression to the bottom of that building is 24.3 degrees. How tall is the nearby building? So, okay, so here's a building here and here's Spidey. We'll just put a dot for Spidey, okay? And he looks up at a nearby building at an angle of elevation of 8.2 degrees and looks down and gets the angle of depression to be 24.3 degrees. Perfect. So the labeling takes a lot out of you. And the only other number I haven't used is the 125. So I'm going to write that right here because the buildings are 125 feet apart. Oh, this is so fun, because if I get this length, x, and I get this length, y, let's make that x look better, yay, and add them up, I'm going to get the approximate height of the building. Okay, cool? So let's do it. Let's figure out some trig functions for x. So here we go. Well, it's opposite over adjacent. So the tangent of 8.2 degrees is equal to x over 125. Perfect. Good. So we get 125 times the tangent of 8.2 degrees is equal to x. So I'm going to go out, um, so it's 125 times the tangent of 8.2, and I'm getting x is approximately equal to, and now I'm not going to round it yet, I'm going to go out like three decimal places, 18.013. That's three decimal places, so I'm going to be totally safe. Now let's do the y thing. Well, we're going to use tangent again because the tangent of 24.3 degrees is equal to y over 125. Because there's the triangle right there, you guys. It's opposite over adjacent. Cool? So we're going to get 125 times the tangent of 24.3 degrees is equal to y. So I use my handy dandy calculator. And I get that y is approximately equal to, now I'm going to go out three decimal places, 56.440 when I round it. And these are both in feet. So now I have to add x plus y, and that will give me my total. Cool? Cool? I changed the x to blue because x was blue here. So I'm going to get 18.013 plus 56.440. If I add that up, I get 74.4. But they asked me to the nearest tenth, so 74, which is approximately 74.5 feet tall. The building is in Yoda Talk. And the last application that we're going to be doing in this section is a little bit more intense, but not too bad. Very similar to the one we just did. 
So now it's Superman's flying from Binghamton to Owego. And at, at one point, he is 0.4 miles in the air. So here he is. He's so cute. I'll call him S. And the distance from here to here is 0.4. And this is Binghamton to Owego. I like blue better, so we're going to go with that. He notices that the angles of depression to the two towns in line with his current position are 2.34 degrees and 1.86 degrees. So here's a Superman guy, and this is 2.34 degrees, and you, 1.86 degrees. Now I have to tell you guys, these are not drawn to scale. However, we're just going to deal with them. How far apart are the towns? Well, let's call this distance from B to this point, let's call it big fat R, little y, and let's call this distance from R to a we go, little x. Would y'all agree with me that if I add up x plus y, I'll get the total distance? Right? So all we have to do is get x, get y, add them up, and we're done. Cool? Now you're probably saying, I don't know how to do this, but don't panic, because I'm going to make another triangle here and here. If I do that, this distance will be equivalent to 0.4, and so will this one. Yay! Okay, so we got angles... And then you're like, well, what does that have to do with X and Y? Well, if you think about it, Y is here, but Y is also up there. And X is here, but X is also up here. Perfect. Now, I'm all psyched because both of these are right triangles. So now I'm going to set it up that <clears throat> if you think about it, we go do, 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 do. It's opposite over adjacent for both of these. So for this first equation, I'll get the tangent of 1.86 degrees is equal to 0.4 over y. Good? And then similarly, the tangent of 2.34 is equal to 0.4 over x. So now, let's go ahead and calculate them. Wanna? Yeah, let's. This will be y times the tangent of 1.86 degrees is equal to 0.4. So y is going to equal 0.4 divided by the tangent of 1.86 degrees. Cool? Now, now we're going to do the other one. We get x times the tangent of 2.34 degrees is equal to 0.4 by cross multiplying. Again, you can put that tangent over 1 or just multiplying both sides by x. So x is equal to 0.4 divided by the tangent of 2.34 degrees. Now here's the deal. Let's get the approximations for both of them. When I pop this first one with y, I'll use red, we will get 12.3173. And the x, which I'll use black, we will get 9.7887. Now we're going to have to add these two things up and then we'll round to the nearest hundredth. So now, when I add them up, x plus y is approximately equal to 22.106. And now I'm going to round to the nearest hundredth. So my distance is approximately equal to 22.11 miles. Cool? And then I'm done. Now you can do the lesson associated with these problems. Good luck, take care, ask lots of questions.